So we're back for part two of the Deep Cool Gamer Storm Captain 360 installation video thingy. So I'm going to be not installing it in this thing, of course. I'm actually working on my little home server as well, but I'm going to be installing it in my main computer over here, which is completely, almost completely deconstructed. And uh, just give you a little internal view here and um, yeah so uh, got the 7970 for video rendering 32 gigs of RAM and here is the Corsair H100 that has served me so well all these years and um, gonna take it out and I'm going to mount it over here where those dusty fans are. And it's going to water cool the 7970, which I'm kind of conflicted about because I've always really enjoyed the way the 7970 looks. Actually, I could have bought a 280X, but I like the shroud on the 7970 so much that I just bought one of these. Um, obviously, I got a better price on it, but I just like the way it looked too. So... Yeah, so that is the plan, and uh, I've taken out a couple of hard drives because I'm kind of moving to a more kind of server-based system than just keeping all my hard drives in here, and um, I'm going to keep all my video in this computer, but all my pictures, and what else, all my pictures and uh, music is going to be in here, and this is going to be pictures. And this is going to be documents, music, that kind of stuff. This is a free NAS right here, and uh, it has nothing to do with the video. But, yeah, this is going to be in RAID 1 mirror, RAID 1 mirror. So um, this is probably going to be the best I've ever had my data backed up as well. So I'm looking forward to this kind of overhaul that I'm doing on my, all my systems here. And, yeah. I'm looking forward to the end. So I'm going to mount this camera. I'm going to install this thing, give you a look at it. And it's going to be in high speed, so don't get dizzy. But uh, I'm going to clean it out with that thing. You get to see a little of my, my Christmas spirit there. But, uh, yeah, so hopefully things should be short, sweet, and not have any trouble. So let's get going. All right, so here I am taking out the old Corsair H100, and uh, obviously I'm going to use the fans from this thing on the new model. Um, hopefully it gets done pretty fast. So here's the Deep Cool Captain, and uh, I'm putting the old fans on there. I just cleaned them off a little bit, and I had a little trouble trying to decide how I wanted to put the fans on there um, I was kind of thinking about the lighting of the case and how I wanted everything to look so um, I'm kind of playing you know the shell game with these fans right now because kind of the LEDs are really important to me so I wanted to keep my case illuminated evenly um, but I obviously wanted to use those fans. Those are really good fans, uh, by the way. And, um, yeah, I just wanted to utilize them. So I probably went through three different, you know, kind of ways of thinking about how I was going to use it. So uh, eventually I just decided to go ahead and use them. I had one left over. I was going to, I decided to use the, those are Bit Phoenix Spectres. Those are also pretty good fans. They're fluid dynamic fans and the LEDs are really good. 
And um, so I put those on top, uh, which gives you the red illumination on top. And I put uh, the the stock fans, the uh, deep cool fans on the bottom. And actually when I put them in the case, I thought they looked really good. So that was a, uh, that was a good thing. So what am I thinking about here? All right, so now I gotta remove this back plate. And yeah, you know, this is for an AMD build. So I was like, do I really have to remove the back plate? And ultimately, I just decided just to follow the directions. I didn't want anything to go wrong. I didn't want to, because if you don't put that back plate on it properly, you can actually short out your computer. So I obviously didn't want to do that. Um, so I just follow the directions basically step by step. The directions are not great. They're not horrible either. So there's these plastic fittings that you have to put on the back plate that keep your board from shorting out. So make sure you put those on. So you have to hold in and to keep it in place. There's these, you see the little black grommets down there. I put the black grommets on and those actually kept the back plate in place while I got the CPU and everything ready. So I didn't have much thermal paste, which honestly is kind of a good thing. You don't need very much. That stuff spreads out when you mount your, your pump on there. Uh, so another thing you notice is that I actually mounted the pump in the K, the tubing in a different direction than I had with the H100. Um, I never really liked the way the H100 kind of wrapped around and covered up my RAM. So this is a good thing. And you notice that I changed the position of those fans down there again. And when I put it in there, I realized that it's actually reversed. I wanted that LED on this on the, I guess it will be my left hand side of the case, uh, but it ended up being on the right. So that's just not me knowing geometry very well. So I had to take it off and switch them out. And then I, I switched them out again later. So this is just kind of an ongoing process for me. But what am I thinking of right here? So um, I'm trying to figure out how to put the bracket on that you mount the, pump, the pump on. Um, that's my dog is always spazzing out in the background. So I realized that you had to put the the bracket on the pump, not, you know, on the outside. Okay. So basically there's two metal bars that you have to mount onto the bracket and that must be mounted onto the pump with those four small screws from the outside. And here's another thing. I was actually missing a screw to mount that, that those brackets onto the pump. Fortunately, I had another one. So you're going to see me kind of leave it and come in a couple of times. Uh, but yeah, that's what I was going to get. I needed to get another screw so I could finish mounting it on there. Um, the mount process was very easy. Uh, fortunately, I had a motherboard cut out, a uh, back plate cut out on my motherboard, which made it easy. So this is me putting that fan on there again. Uh, and another thing you want to watch out for is you want to make sure that First of all, I mounted all my fans to blow air out of the top of the case. Um, because of the case is so big, it acts like a heat tower. And you want all that hot air coming out the top. So I didn't go for, for the top down option. I mounted all those fans to come out to blow air out of the case. Um, and I think it really helped my airflow actually. Uh, I think it really helped it. Um, one thing I didn't make a graph, maybe I should make a graph, but, uh, my temps are now idling at 19 C. So yeah, those temps are idling at 19 C and, um, as I'm editing this video right now, I'm doing this voiceover. It actually um, is capping out at about 40 um, and that's I'm looking at you know my load and all of those cores are under like 70% load so that is a really good tip I mean that is excellent and uh, really I've seen normal idle temperatures to I mean you know idle temperatures to, to hover there for at about 15 C for a significant amount of time. So whereas before I was getting 15 C, 
you know, only when it was very cold outside and I left the window open. Now I'm getting it on a regular basis. So I would say I've probably dropped maybe um, an average of, of 10 C. Uh, and that is amazing to me um, to go just from a, a double rat to a triple rat and drop that significantly that is a huge drop for me so here you see I'm uh, bolting uh, though that the bracket to the motherboard so you don't want to bolt it too tight you don't want to bolt it too loose and um, yeah and it, it fit right on there it wasn't a problem everything was snug um, and honestly I kind of like this I think this is a better method than the uh, Corsair 100. Now, the Corsair 100 is super easy. I mean, mounting it is no problem. It just fits on the standard bracket. Man, it takes like five seconds. Now, this is more work, but I think it's a more effective method. Um, I think it's more secure. Um, obviously, this is a maybe twice as big as the, the pump unit on the H100. So, you do need um, a, a beefier kind of uh, retention bracket set up here so yeah this is me going to get that screw that they didn't include you probably saw me just looking for it and like dang where's the screw I maybe thought I dropped it but nah it just wasn't in there so there it is I'm putting it in there now no big deal um, trying to see everything good sometimes you're gonna need a flashlight and um, I'm basically done at this point um, so a tip for mounting the uh, the push pull config is that you want to put one screw um, do the bottom fans first run all of your wires through because you're going to cover up your wires if you don't do that first but when you're mounting that those top ones it can be really tricky so i put one screw in each fan and that kind of puts it in there it holds it in there and it makes it much easier for you to uh, Put the rest of the screws in there now the bottom screws were much more difficult i can see the top screws as i put them in but i couldn't see the bot you you're flying blind with, with the bottom screws you can't see it at all uh so um yeah you need to use i i use some non-stock screws the screws they provide are very short uh, and obviously, you know, you don't want to puncture your radiator or anything like that with really long screws, but I got some screws that were just a little bit longer and I put those in the bottom and I put the standard screws in the top. Now, fortunately I've been doing the computer thing for a while. So I've got, you know, I've done push pull stuff before and I had some screws laying around. that were a little bit longer than what they provided. And I used a washer. Uh, to make sure that I didn't puncture the radiator. So the, the longer screws are in the bottom of the top of the radiator, if you understand at all what I'm talking about. But that's that's my tip if you really want to hear me out. So hopefully this commentating is kind of helping you think through this thing. So the, here is the uh, here is the PWM splitter. And it's a high quality splitter. I would buy another one of these. Uh, fortunately, the Blackhawk has a whole bunch of kind of a fan base. Um, and those Bit Phoenix uh, fans are not PWM. They're not PWM. Um, the fans that come with the Deep Cool unit are four pin headers. So they're off PWM, the, the, the splitter's PWM. And when you plug it into your board, uh, you can hear the fans ramping up and ramping down and it does it and I guess this is more of a motherboard thing but it does it pretty smoothly and um, my unit has gotten louder it's noticeably louder but it's not an annoying kind of loud like you know good PWM fans they they sound like a you can probably hear it um, I'm sitting right next to my computer um, but they sound like kind of a, a, a win not a rushing win but a a gentle gust so when you've really got things worked out in your computer and the airflow is just right yeah it's it's more of a it's a it's almost kind of a relaxing type of of wind that it is it's like sitting on the beach I mean it's it's there but it's not annoying it's not a whine None of the fans are clicking and clacking um, but it's it's a very shh, shh, that, that's my sound effect there 
Um, so what am I doing now? I'm still kind of routing these, uh, routing these cables in the back. As you can see, I've got a lot of stuff in this computer and some of those hard drives are not even in use, but they're like old hard drives with old data on them that I haven't transferred over. And like I said earlier in the video, I'm working on that, but for now that old data is just there. Um, like I said, I'm trying to build kind of a server network in my house where all my documents, pictures, and music kind of reside. And that's kind of my, my next big plan. But for now, there's just a bunch of cables in there. And fortunately, you don't see them as much in the front. You know, I wish I could get some kind of, uh, um, you know, some kind of block that will block. You see all those cables there at the bottom that will block all those cables at the bottom. But... You know, it's kind of a, a flaw of the design of the case. I wish it had a basement that would cover up all those cables, but you know, maybe I'll think about that next time I buy a case. So, all right, so this is basically the end of the video. Here it is working now. You gotta, you know, keep in mind that this is high speed, so it doesn't blink that fast. Uh, but here's your eye candy here, and this is the finished product. And um, I think it looks great. I think it looks much better than the H100. I think it works better than the H100. And kind of my skepticism about, you know, kind of doing this upgrade that doesn't really help my performance, not true. Um, even my GPU runs cooler. My GPU is running about five degrees cooler because of those uh, two added fans that are now in my case getting more hot air out of the case. Uh, so that's a win. Um, my CPU is cooler. Uh, 10 degrees cooler maybe on average you know probably it's maybe being uh, exaggerating a little bit you know probably more like seven to eight degrees cooler but that's a lot and my gpu is cooler it's five degrees cooler and i didn't expect that to happen but you're moving more air out of the case you're getting the hot air out and i wish um i had taken some readings of my vrms uh before I did this video, but I didn't. So, but I would bet that the VRMs are running cooler as well. So, what can you say? It looks good. It sounds good. Um, I'm happy. I'm really happy with the upgrade. And like I said, in the future, I'm going to put the uh, the Kraken on there on the 7970. So that's the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Sub, like, subscribe. You know. But uh, yeah, I will buy the unit. Peace out.